Hey you guys, it's Matt Frazier, The Psychic Medium, and I am live right now, and this is really fun because I love coming on here and answering your questions about heaven and the afterlife. And I gotta tell you guys that it never ceases to amaze me that how every time I think that I've answered everything about the spirit world, the afterlife, what happens when you die, I come on here on Facebook and YouTube, and the next thing you know, you guys ask me all of these questions, and it's funny because I love answering as many as you send. Because for me, it's my world every single day, right? For me, every single day, I live life among the dead. And in doing so, I get a little inside look about what happens when you die, what our spirits are doing on the other side, and more importantly, what we don't see as humans here in this world. You know, that's one of the things that I love so much about my psychic gift is that every time I'm doing a reading for your loved ones in spirit, they give me an inside look into the spirit world and I uncover and learn more and more and more. And I love coming on here and sharing all of that information with all of you. And first of all, I want to say hello to all of you. I see Nick is here from Phoenix, Arizona. KOB is here from Ireland. I also see that Christy is here. Christy Anderson, that is from Nashville, Texas. And uh, Kita Ray is here. I also see Susanna is here as well. Hello, hello. First of all, you guys, if you have a question about heaven and the afterlife, leave it in the comments below. But I want, first of all, I want to start off by one of the questions that you guys ask me all the time, and that is Matt. You always say that our loved ones can see everything that we do. Can they really see everything that we do? Can they watch us shit, shower, and shave, right? And can they watch us do other things? Can they watch us in the shower? Well, what I want you guys to know is that when your loved ones pass on to the other side, they can see into our world whenever they want. And what's really cool is they can see any different particular moment of your life. And they can even rewind time and go back to certain moments that happened years ago, 25 years ago, because there is no time on the other side. But what I want you to know is this, okay, is that your loved ones have access to any part of your life that they want. But does that mean that they actually go there? Well, I'll tell you that in doing the readings that I do, right, the souls have respect for us here in this world. So the same way that doors were invented here in this world to keep our privacy, right, doors and shades and blinds, it's the same thing with the other side. Your loved ones in spirit are respectful of you in heaven. And just because they can do something doesn't mean that they will do something. So yes, if your loved ones want to, they can watch you on the throne. They can watch you in the bedroom. They can watch you shower. But I'll tell you, I've never had a soul that came through to me and said, oh, Matt, by the way, oh my God, I can't believe what my daughter's doing in the bedroom or what my son has in his nightstand, right? What I want you guys to know is that your loved ones in spirit, and by the way, I know that you guys are probably like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that, right? But I'm real with y'all. And I got to tell you that these are the questions that I get asked in private every single day, you know, and so many people freak out and they're like, oh my God, Matt, you know, does my mom really see... Eh, 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 eh. Or does my dad really know? Eh, 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 right? And what I can tell you guys is that they <laughs> they don't want to know those things. <laughs> right? There's many times when your loved ones in spirit close their eyes and look the other way. We'll put it that way. Okay? And I'm going to tell you that when I'm on the other side one day, I don't want to know what you was doing in the bathroom or the bedroom or anything like that. Right? The same way that your loved ones in spirit. And Sandy, thank you so much. Sandy goes, thank you for explaining. She said in me hearts. Listen. I got to tell you guys that the thing is, and I see some of you guys are laughing at me right now, but the thing is, is that I want you guys to know everything that I know. And just because our loved ones can see into our lives here in this world, it's not something that you should be afraid of because your loved ones, you know, tune in to the most important moments and they look away from the moments that, you know, uh, the moments that they shouldn't see. So I want you guys to know this because at the end of the day, your loved ones don't care, right? They don't care what you do in the bathroom. They don't care about what you do while you're showering or in, when you're in the bedroom. But what they do care about is seeing the moments that matter here in this world, right? Their grandchildren taking their first steps, their daughter walking down the aisle and getting married, even though they can't physically be there with her, right? Their, their son going through that divorce where they really need a little bit of, of uh, where they really need a little bit of extra hope and a little bit of extra uh, energy, right? Those are the moments that your loved ones are uh, there for. They're watching in on all the good moments within your life, and they don't care about the rest. It's, for example, I'm going to tell you, for example, now that Royce is one years old, I've had my fair share of shitty diapers, right? 
<laughs> and it's funny because when you go through this, right, and you think of all the moments that you have with your son or your daughter or your newborn, you never remember the diapers. You never remember changing the diapers or wiping the bum or anything like that. And of course, we all joke, right? I know that even like when I was growing up, my, there's certain family members that would come up to me and be like, oh my God, I remember when I was changing your diaper. I remember what your hiney looked like. And the thing is, is that I know that they probably had no idea what the hell my hiney looked like, right? But the thing is, is that you don't remember those times because it's the moments that you have with your loved ones that are so much more powerful. So that's one of the things that I want to share with you guys as well, because I know that you guys freak out all the time about that. Karen Daly goes, I love this. It's so true though, isn't it? Right? You know, it's like just because people always think the worst because when your loved ones first go to the other side, we automatically think that because they have certain privileges in heaven, they can see certain things of our lives. We think that suddenly they lost respect for us or that they can go and overstep those boundaries. But like I said, your loved ones, your loved ones don't. <laughs> okay, so Cal is correcting me. So Cal says, so Cal Mama Bia says, I remember some of those diapers. Listen. I gotta be honest. Yes, it's true. It's true. You guys went and warned me when I first had Royce. Oh my God. You're like, wait until he poops all the way up his back. And I'll tell you, I'll always remember that moment. That's a moment I'll never forget because when you guys were saying that to me, Matt, wait till he poops up his back. I was saying to myself, this must be a figure of speech. There's no way. There's no way. And when all you moms were out there, wait until the poops all the way up the back. I'm like, no, no. Until all of a sudden I did have that diaper. Right. And I was like, Oh, they weren't kidding. They weren't kidding, right? So first of all, thank you so much. I know you guys tried to tried to warn me about that, right? So thank you so much for, for doing that. And Lydia says, yes, I remember those days. It's true. It's true. But anyways, I am here to answer your questions about heaven and the afterlife. So leave me a comment. Let me know what it is that you would like to know about what happens when you die. I want to make sure that I go and answer as many questions as I possibly can, because it's always fun. And I always love this doing live over here with one another. And while I have you guys here, this is really important. Today is the last day to sign up for my October 5th online reading. So I will be giving live readings online. These are live video readings on October 5th, okay? It's $19 to register, but today is the last day. So if you'd like to join me on October 5th and join me for a live online reading and connect with your loved ones, you got to make sure that you're registered at meetmattfraser.com meetmattfraser.com. Today is the last day to register. There's less than 24 hours left. So make sure you have your spot reserved because the saddest thing is sometimes people miss the deadline and then next thing you know, they don't get to be a part of the event. So that would be that if, if uh, you would like to go and be a part of that online reading, there's still some time you have less than 24 hours left. Just go to meetmattfraser.com to be a part of that. Um, and we're going to get started right away with the questions because I see some of your questions coming in. Um, and this is a really good question. So Nicole is asking me, Matt, are our loved ones all together or are they in separate heavens? So what I love so much about channeling your loved ones, this is a good question, Nicole, is that your loved ones are all in one place, right? So it doesn't matter what religion you practice here in this world, right? And there's so many different religions, right? We have Christianity. We have, we, some people are Catholic. Some people are Roman Catholic. Some people are Greek Orthodox. I don't even know the difference between all of them, right? And what I can tell you is it doesn't matter if... It doesn't matter if your religion is different than your family member, than, uh, than an extended family member, or your best friend. What I can tell you is that everybody is in one heaven with one another, even our pets. And that's why it doesn't make a difference, right? It doesn't make a difference to me what religion you are. I never even have to ask because I know that your loved ones are there and I know that they're going to come through. And that's something that I've learned when I came into mediumship, right? And I got to tell you, I love reading for people with different religious backgrounds because I've gotten to learn so much. And that's why here in my office, you'll see that I welcome all religions, spirituality, whether you're Christian, Catholic, whether um, you follow Buddha, whatever teachings it is that you follow, I have little things in my office that represent every single religion because all religions are beautiful and they're all a way for us to connect with our loved ones to the other side. And from what I've learned is that we're all in one heaven. So that's one of the things that I find is, is truly comforting and truly amazing because if we had a connection with someone here in this world, we're reunited with them on the other side. Um, 
So Jane has asked me a good question. This is a loaded question, Jane. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> she goes, Matt, does everyone go to heaven? I've been told different. So no, not everybody goes to heaven. I'll tell you that. But, you know, I don't like to say that because people automatically freak out and they're like, oh my God, Matt, does that mean that I'm not going to make it? Does that mean that, oh my God, uh, and all of a sudden people start to think about all the things that they've done wrong in their life. And right away, people are convinced the moment that we answer a question like this, that they're not going to make it in, Right. Well, what I want you to know is this, is that the only time souls don't make it to heaven is if you're truly evil to your core. So the people, the people, so if, if, for example, if when I say that question to you and I say, and I answer the question honestly, and I say, listen, not everybody makes it, makes it to heaven. If you're nervous and you're scared and you start to think about the things that you did wrong in your life that you regret, that tells me you're going to heaven, right? Because you truly feel bad. There's things in life that we do that we regret years later. There's things that we do in life that we genuinely feel bad about, right? We're not perfect. We all make mistakes. We all do things that we regret later on in the future. But the key word is regretting them, right? That means that you're a good person because, you know, you don't, you know, people who are good, they don't want to hurt somebody. They look back on their past and they feel bad about some of the arguments they got into, the fights that they got into, the uh, hurt that they caused others, right? Those are the people that I, that I know are going to make it to the other side. But the souls that were evil, that did truly evil things like murder, rape, things like that, those are the souls that don't make it to the other side. Now, what I want you guys to know is that there's two different vibrations, right? I've always, I've always learned as a medium that there's two vibrations. Think of it like AM station and FM station. You got your higher vibration, which I like to think of as FM radio. You get your higher vibration, which is where your loved ones are, your angels are, your spirit guides are. And then you have the lower vibration. And the lower vibration are the souls that were evil, nasty, and negative here in this world. And the souls that won't transition onto the other side because they were so evil that they were evil to their core. So what does that mean, evil to their core? Well, to me, evil to their core means when somebody did horrendous things like murder and didn't care, right? For example, I'll never forget, I was watching some documentary on Netflix, I had to change it. And they were interviewing like the people in like the most dangerous prisons. And there was this guy who was like a serial killer. And they asked him, do you regret what you did? And he was serving multiple life sentences and whatnot. And they asked him, do you regret what you did? And he said, no, that he would do it again. And I was watching this and I was mortified. I was like, what? I had to, I had to turn off. The, it, it shook me so much. You guys, I remember like when he said that, like I was expecting him to be like, oh, I truly regret it. So on and so forth. And when he said, no, I don't, I don't have any remorse. I'd do it again. My heart sank. I, I got so upset. You guys, I had to change the channel. Right. And then I realized why there's some souls that don't make it to the other side. That summed it up to me right then and right there that somebody could be that evil and, you know, uh, and do those things and, and not regret it. And um, AG Designs is such a great question. I wonder about my sister. Well, listen, I think everybody wonders, do our loved ones make it to the other side, right? I know that's the first thing that we think of when our loved one first passes. And many people write to me and they're freaked out. And they're like, oh my God, I haven't heard from my mom. I haven't heard from my dad. I haven't felt them. Does that mean that they're not in heaven? No, your loved ones do transition over, right? But sometimes it can take a good year to um, speak to your loved ones and connect with them. Because when they first get to the other side, they have to learn how to communicate with us the same way that we have to learn how to communicate with them. Um, this is a really good question. So Gina is asking me, Matt, can all spirits contact their loved ones on earth? Absolutely. Right. What I want you guys to know is that your loved ones on the other side, when they first get to heaven, one of the first things that they do after they meet their friends, their family members, they go through their life review is that every soul that I talk to wants to come back and check up on those that they loved here in this world. They check up on their mom or their dad or their sister or their brother, whoever that's left here in this world, they'll come and check up on. And many times I'll notice that souls will even attend their own funerals or wakes because they want to check up on the people that they truly loved and cared about here in this world. And I can tell you that one of the ways that your loved ones communicate with you from the other side is they send you signs. Signs are the number one way that your loved ones get your attention from spirit. And signs are a language that both the dead and the living can understand. Signs like dragonflies, butterflies, repeating numbers, dreams of a loved one, feeling your loved one with you, or feeling a presence and not knowing who it is, right? How many times does that happen? How many times have you felt like you're not alone in the room? You feel like someone's watching you. How many times have you smelt something around you and you're like, oh my God, that's a familiar smell. And maybe it was the cigar smoke that your grandfather used to, used to smoke or smell like, right? Maybe it was the perfume that your grandmother used to wear. The signs are everywhere. And the signs are a language that your loved ones can use to communicate between two worlds. 
And sometimes you might even notice that your loved ones will speak to you through electronics, right? That's one of the coolest things, like sending you songs that remind you that they're there. So that being said, yes, your loved ones can communicate and even your pets can send you signs to let you know that they're there in spirit. When you lose a pet, sometimes you might hear things that remind you of that pet. You might be sleeping and swear that you hear the pitter patter of feet or nails run across, across your floor, but your dog had passed just last year, right? That's a sign. That's real. It's your loved one in spirit, your, your pet loved one, I should say, letting you know that they're there and that they're with you. And... um. This is a really good question. So Tammy's asking me, Matt, can extreme grief block me from seeing signs? Yes, it can. I can tell you guys that grief is the number one block that stops us from sensing and feeling our loved ones in spirit. And it's actually funny because, you know, everybody that's around me, all my team members were like, Matt, why don't you write a book about grief? You should really write a book about grief. And I don't, I'm, I'm the, the hardest part about writing a book about grief is that the book, if I were to write a book about grief, the people who were actually grieving wouldn't pick the copy up and read it. And here's the reason why. Because most people are in denial. Most people don't realize that they're going through grief. I've noticed this. I've noticed that when you put the word grief on something, the people who are actually grieving, right, won't read it, won't pick it up because they really don't know that they're going through it. And that's the saddest thing is that, you know, we all go through grief, but 90% of the people don't know that they're going through it. And grief acts in different ways, right? And it mimics different symptoms. So one person's grief is completely different than someone else's grief. And sometimes grief comes in waves and it lingers within us. We think we're doing really good, right? But there's still unresolved issues that we're feeling on the inside. So grief can block you from seeing signs for one reason. When you lose a loved one and you're going through grief, grief makes you question everything. It makes you question from a spiritual standpoint, if heaven is real, if the afterlife is real, if your loved ones are with you, and I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. There's many times when psychics and mediums will come to me and they'll be so freaked out because they don't expect to go through grief themselves. And they do because they're human. So if you're human, you're susceptible to grief. But And there have been many times where psychics and mediums have come to me and they're like, Matt, I don't know what's happened to me. I was so psychic. I could connect with anyone with their loved ones. I would see the spirit world, get visions of the spirit world. But my mom died and I'm freaking out because I can't connect with her. And then I would do the reading and their mother would be there, but the grief would stop them from believing that what the information that they're receiving is real. Meaning they would try to connect with their mom, their dad, their sister being a psychic, but because they were going through grief, they didn't believe it was really them or they were really hearing from them. So I'm telling you this because all psychics and mediums go through this, right? And sometimes we go through grief in different ways. To that medium that I was reading for, she had such a hard time communicating with her mom after she after her mom had passed because she was so used to having her mother in the, in the physical form that she couldn't accept the fact that her mom was in the spiritual form. It was too close to home. Just one of the ways that grief hits. But one of the things that you can do is learn as much about the other side as possible. The more that you learn about what heaven is like, how, how heaven is real, right? What, what happens on the other side, the more that you can open yourself up and push past the grief. And what I want you guys to know is that even when doing a reading, when I'm reading for somebody that's deep in grief here in this world, I can give them validation that their, that their dad is there, validation that, that their mom is there, validation that their sister or their brother is there and with them. But at the end of the day, the one thing that my gift can't do is it can't eliminate grief entirely. I can give you all the signs, all the proof, all the validations that your loved one is there. I can connect you with them. I can help you speak to them. But at the end of the day, grief is a journey. And you know, there's been people who have come back to my online readings because they've gotten an amazing reading where they heard for their mom or their dad or their sister or their brother. Just happened with the man I was reading for. I'm going to post the video. He actually came to me, heard an amazing message from his dad, got off the reading, felt so good. And a couple days later, grief set in and he started to question himself. What if that really wasn't real? What if that really wasn't my dad? What if, what if Matt looked it up? What if this, what if that, what if the other thing? How do I know this? Well, he came to my reading a couple months later and then his brother came through and his brother told me, his brother told me that he came back because he had heard from his father, right? Didn't hear a message from his brother, heard from, heard from his father, then came back, right? Because he was questioning all those things again. And his brother came and said to him, when are you going to believe? How, what's going to take you to believe that this is real and that we're here and with you and that there is another side, right? So like I said, grief hits us all in different ways, but it's a journey that we all take. And I can tell you that unfortunately, unfortunately, it can last a very long time. 
But the secret is knowing that every baby step that you take towards re regaining your control of your life and pushing past the grief is just that it's a baby step in the right direction. And one day your grief will subside and you'll start to see the signs from your loved ones. And by the way, for all of you who just joined, today is the last day to sign up for the October 5th online reading. Right now I'm answering live questions about heaven and the afterlife. So for those of you who are live with me, I'm glad that you're here. If you have a question about what happens when you die, leave it in the comments below. I want to get to as many questions as I possibly can. And if you'd like to join me for a live online reading where I'll connect you with your loved ones, August is sold out. September is sold out. Uh, October 1st is sold out. October 3rd is sold out. But today is the last day to sign up for October 5th. So if you'd like to join me on October 5th for a live online video reading where I'll be doing live readings from this office, you're going to go to meetmattfraser.com. Today's the last day to register. I also want you guys to know that if you haven't heard, me and my mom are coming together and we're doing a live psychic seance on October 30th where we're going to help you connect with your loved ones on the other side. So for the first time ever on October 30th, me and my mom are hosting a special online event where we'll be doing readings together, answering your questions, and also teaching you safe ways to make contact with your loved ones in spirit. So to reserve your spot, just go to meetmattfraser.com. You can join the, the October 5th online reading or the October 30th online psychic seance. Make sure you have your spot reserved. All right. Next question, because this is something that I love to answer, is, um, hold on one second. This is a really good question. So Lisa Torres is asking me, Matt, can our loved ones hear us when we talk? Absolutely. They can hear you when you talk to them either out loud or in your head. And I just want to share with you guys a beautiful validation that I received from a loved one's son who had passed away. And I think that this really shows us just the great lengths of how our loved ones in spirit can hear us sense, uh, sense, can hear us sense when we talk about them, right? And, e and even see the things that we do for them. So Lisa, to answer this question, there was a woman that I was just reading for and her son had passed away. And the moment that I connected with his mom, his, the son was telling me, Matt, tell my mom, thank you for the Facebook messages. Thank you for the Facebook messages. She writes me Facebook messages every day. So I looked at her and I said to her, hey, your son is, wants to thank you for the messages that you send him on Facebook. And she looked at me and she was so surprised. She goes, oh my God. And she started crying. And she says, Matt, since my son died every day, nobody knows this. She goes, but every day I log into Facebook and I send him a private message to his Facebook account. I tell him how much I love him. I tell him what's going on in the day. I wish him a happy birthday. I tell him some of the things that I'm doing. And every day since her since her son had passed away, he had been gone for a couple of years, she had logged in and every morning. She would wish, wish him a good morning on Facebook and leave him a message. Well, don't you know that in spirit, her son got all of those messages? Not because they have Facebook on the other side, right? They don't have Verizon or Cox Cable or anything like that. But her son knew that she was sending him those messages because anytime that she thought about him, right, he got alerted in heaven. And that's what's really cool. The same way that you get those, those little intuitions where you can tell when the phone's going to ring, you can tell when, when you're going to meet somebody. For example, how many of you have had that situation come up where somebody pops into your head and you're like, oh, that's weird that I'm thinking about that person. I haven't seen them in years. And then next thing you know, you run into them at the supermarket or you're driving your car and there they are going right by you and you're like, I was just thinking about them, right? What I want you guys to know is that that is the same way that your loved ones in spirit hear messages from you. This, when you think a message to your loved one, they hear it in heaven. It's almost like sending a text message. Oh my God, I see Corte is here from Italy. I love that. Thank you so much. That's so cool knowing that you're here from Italy. Um, this is a really good question. So Sharon's asking me, Matt, did my uncle know who stole off him? Now, this is a question that I'm glad that you asked Sharon because it's something that I see all the time in readings. So yes, your loved ones know who have done them wrong here in this world. And what I can tell you is at the end of the day, when we pass on, we go through a life review. And during that life review, everything is revealed to us. The people that truly loved us, the people who truly cared about us. But also what's revealed to us when we pass on are the people who wished us harm, did us harm, and went behind our back. And what I can tell you is, is that your loved ones in heaven don't go and hold on to that, that grudge in heaven, right? At the end of the day, your loved ones in spirit know this information, but it's not like they're in heaven upset or their soul isn't at peace. Because the amazing thing about heaven is that when we transition on, our, our body stays here in this world, but our soul transitions to the other side. Our soul separates from our body. 
And in doing so, when we leave this world behind, we leave behind the um, the negative thoughts and the connections to things that were important here in this world. For example, here in this world, we need money. Money is a very important thing to us because of the fact that we have to live, right? We have to pay our bills. You can say anything that you want, but at the end of the day, we need money to pay our bills, to pay our mortgage, to pay our rent, to pay our cars, to put our kids through school, so on and so forth, right? And money is also a test because it brings out the worst in people. But when your loved ones go to the other side, they don't have to worry about paying taxes, paying car loans. They don't have, they don't worry about, you know, how much money they have in the bank and things like that, that we have to worry about here. And what I can tell you is, is that because of that, your loved ones don't experience the greed, the jealousy, the things that we experience as humans here in this world. So yes, your loved ones do know about the people who had done things behind their back here in this world. But what I can tell you is, is that in heaven, in heaven, they're not worried about those things. What they are, what's more important to them is the people that did the good things for them. They're not in heaven saying, oh my God, I can't believe he stole $50 out of my wallet. But what they are in heaven is saying that, you know, they forget about the people who, you know, didn't want good things for them. And they focus on the people who really loved and cared about them. The people that were by their side, that truly loved them, that are mourning them still to this day, that, you know, really need them by their side to watch over them. That's what they're really looking at in heaven. And I hope that makes sense. Because sometimes we hold on to loved ones grudges here in this world. For example, there was a woman that I was reading for, and she was so upset because her mother was the mother to have here in this world. Her mother was the mother that everybody wanted when she was alive. Her mom was somebody who loved everybody, always had everyone at her house, was just a wonderful person here in this world. And her mother was the type of person that kept track of of every birthday, holiday, celebration. If you had a birthday, you'd get a card and a phone call from her mother every year. If somebody died in the family, her mother would stop what she was doing and fly anywhere that she could to be a part of those funerals or services. And then she was shocked because when her mom passed away, her mom didn't get the same respect from certain family members. Families, Certain family members didn't come to say goodbye to her, didn't show up for the waker services, didn't even send flowers or a card. And she was horrified. And she was like, my mom must be so upset in heaven. And because she was upset and hurt and pains because these people didn't show up for her mother, she thought her mother was upset. She was holding on to that hurt and pain here in this world until her mom came through in a reading and said, listen, it doesn't matter. When she was here, she said, I did these things for my family because I love them. And if they didn't give me the same respect, don't be upset. Leave that with me. Don't hold on to that hurt and pain. And I think that that's a message for all of us. Um... Oh my God, I also see some of you guys are just tuning in right now. Lizzie's also asking me, Matt, do, do pets also stay with us in heaven? Um, absolutely, they do. They Well, I should say that they stay with us in heaven and here in this world, right? When your pets pass on, they watch over you just like your loved ones in spirit do. And they can be any place at any time, just, just like your loved ones in spirit. Um, Hip Cap is asking a good question. Can spirit change tracks on a playlist? Well, listen, it's not like your loved ones are going and saying, all right, I don't like the song she's listening to. Boom, next song. But yeah, when your loved one is visiting you, weird things can happen. When a soul is around you, you can have really weird experiences happen. All of a sudden, the TV might turn on or the volume might go up on its own. Or all of a sudden, it might be that you're walking down the street and you feel a presence with you and then the light bulb just just bursts as you're walking down the street, like the light bulb above you, right? It might be that all of a sudden you get interference in some way. I'll tell you that because your loved ones are energy, when they come and visit you, their en- the energy of their soul can affect different electronics around you. And here's a little secret. Every time I go on stage and every single time that I'm on television, you'll notice that they always mic me up double, especially at my live shows. I have a lapel here, a microphone, excuse me, a lapel microphone here that's back up and I have a handheld back up because being a psychic medium, right? And sometimes they even have to triple mic me. Being a psychic medium, there's always a time when the batteries randomly just go dead. All of a sudden, the microphone will cut out. Random things will happen because our loved ones are energy. And when they're around, that's that's what normally happens. So what I can tell you is, is that we always have a backup of everything for that reason because they can't help it. It's not that your loved ones come in and disconnect the microphone. It's that because they're energy, it's like having a big magnet in the room, right? Because they're energy... Their energy can affect the the electronic components that we have here on Earth. And by the way, for those of you just tuning in, this is really important. Today is the last day to sign up for the October 5th online reading. I'll be giving live readings online via Zoom. It's $19 to register. And during this online event, I'm going to be reading as many people as I possibly can. So far, I've read over 1,000 people online. 
If you've been wanting to connect with a loved one in spirit, if you've been seeing all the hundreds of videos that I've been posting and you want to be a part of an online reading with me, drop what you're doing right now because today is the last day to sign up for the October 5th online reading. The next online reading isn't happening until October 17th. So if you'd like to be a part of the next online reading on October 5th, you've got to go to my website right now, meetmattfraser.com to register. That's where you can join me for a live online reading. All right, next question. Next question that I have to say. Um, this is a really good question. So one love is from YouTube is asking Matt, do our loved ones who have passed on still miss us? And the truth is, is yes, your loved ones do miss you, right? But not in the way that you expect, right? And what I mean by that is that they're not in heaven being like, oh my God, I'm missing out on this. I'm missing out on that. They, I, well, I should say they, they, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for this. They don't miss us in the sense where they miss us. They, they miss our physical presence, right? They miss you in the sense where they love and they care about you and, and they know that you miss them. But your loved ones are able to see everything in your life. So it's not like they're missing you in terms of, oh my God, I don't get to see them, right? Sometimes I think that our loved ones miss the fact that they wish that they could communicate with us to let us know that they're okay. But they don't miss us the way that us humans do. So let me rephrase that. Let me just, it's easier to understand. No, your loved ones don't miss you. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it that way, but they don't miss you in a human sense, I guess is the word, right? They miss you in a spirit sense. Like your loved ones miss the fact that they can just come through. Like one of the things that spirits tell me all the time is they wish that, that they could come through when you're grieving and just say, hey, don't cry anymore. I'm right here and with you. I'm here. I, you don't have to cry. I'm right here and with you. That's what they miss. But do, are they missing you in the terms of they wish that they could come through and hug you and kiss you or connect with you? No, because your loved ones see you in everything that you're doing in life. They see you walking across the graduation stage. They see you getting married. They see you going and having and, and having children, right? They're with you, and, excuse me, they're, they're with you and they're closer now to you than they ever were here in this world. So what I want you to know is that they don't, they don't miss you in the sense as humans do. They just miss the fact in which they could tell you that they were there and with you. I hope that makes sense. But they're with you every day. They can see everything. So no, they don't, they don't miss us in, in that sense. Um, Karen's asking me, Matt, oh, it's Corinne. I'm sorry. Matt, could my loved one have plucked a, a string on the guitar sitting in my room? Absolutely. Listen, I've seen your loved ones do some pretty amazing things when they've come through. You know, it's actually funny. I'm going, to, I'm going to share with you guys a story. This is one of my favorite stories to, to share. I actually talked about it in my book. My neighbor, I when I lived um, on my own, when I was a single man and living on my own in, in Rhode Island, I lived in an apartment complex. And back when I was younger, I was in this apartment complex, and there was this woman who, you know, took a liking, liking to me. She was an older Italian woman. And it's actually funny because when I had met her, she was really sick, and she had just gotten diagnosed where she was passing. And when I, when um I would connect with her every day. She knew that, that, uh, she knew that I was busy and, you know, obviously I was doing readings and whatnot. So she would cook for me every night, every night I would come, I would come back to my apartment and there would be a, uh, you know, meatloaf lasagna. Every night it was something different. She fed me for two years and every, and every day it was a completely different meal. Well, anyway, when she had passed away, she says, Matt, I'm going to come back and I'm going to visit you. And I said, well, listen, sometimes it takes a year's time for you to be able to communicate with me being a medium, and she was okay with passing and leaving this world. But I said to her, let's come up with a sign. Let's come up with something so that when you pass away, you can reach me and let me know instantly that you're okay and that you are um, that you made it to heaven. So she said, okay. So anyway, long story short, is that I had a video doorbell on my door at the time. And every day she would come and she would ring the video doorbell. Every time she'd go down the hall, that would be her joke to me. She'd always ring the doorbell and I'd pull up the video and I'd see her on the, on the, on the video. So I said to her, I says, listen, when you pass away, if I says, when you make it to the other side, I want you to do one thing. I want you to let me know that you're in heaven by ringing my doorbell. So I know that you're there and that you're with, you're with me. And she said, okay. She goes, she goes, I don't, she, and she was so funny. She said to me, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do that, Matt. But when I pass away, she's not going to come back and ring your doorbell. Guys, I'll never forget it. So she had passed away and I was texting back and forth with her husband at the time that was here in this world. And it was crazy because he was at her, at her, um, he, it was a private service. I wasn't invited to, it was family only. She didn't want anyone to see her, you know, um, laid out. So anyways, he was at the services and he said, Matt, he goes, I got to tell you, he goes, I know that this might be weird. He goes, but I, he goes, you've got to see a picture of how beautiful he says, Anna looks, that was his wife. 
So I said to him, I kind of thought it was weird. I wasn't going to say what I was going to say. No, nope, don't send me a picture. So because I'm going to send you a picture of her. Now, I remember when she passed, she didn't want anyone to see her laid out. She, this woman did not want anyone to see her passed away. So I was sitting at home. Actually, I was sitting, I was sitting at, at uh, what's it called at home in my office at this very desk. And I'll never forget. He sent me the picture of her laid out and I opened up the picture. And as the minute that the picture came up on my phone, the doorbell rang. You guys, I must have jumped out of my chair so fast. Right? I was like, I was like this. I was like, what the hell was that? So all of a sudden I go, I run over to my phone and I check, I, I, I check like the, the video camera doorbell and nobody was there. And right away I was, I started laughing and I was like, all right, you got me. Like you spooked me. Like, you, like, I know that was you. I know you didn't want me to see you laid out. I know that I wasn't supposed to see that picture. Right. But at least I know you made it to the other side. And I remember telling your husband and he couldn't believe it. And it was crazy because I went back through that picture and nobody was at the door, but I know that it was her soul. So yeah, souls can do some pretty amazing things. And that's why I always encourage you guys to go and to look for all the signs from your loved ones, not just the bat, bat, dragonflies, butterflies, and repeating numbers. Look for unique individual signs that they're there and that they're with you. And by the way, I see, oh my God, we're up to 1,600 people now. This is amazing. I can't believe you guys are all live with me. For those of you who just tuned in, I'm, I'm answering your questions about heaven and the afterlife. So if you have a question about heaven in the afterlife, leave it in the comments below. And what I also want you guys to know is this, is that on October 5th, I'll be giving live readings online. Today is the last day to register. Let me just make sure spots are still available. Yes, they are. So if you'd like to join a live online reading with me, there's a few spots left. Today is the last day to register. October 5th, it's $19. I'll be giving live online readings to you guys and helping you connect with your loved ones and spirits. So if you'd like to be a lot part of a live online reading with me, go to my website right now, meetmattfraser.com, meetmattfraser.com, and click the link on the bio. That's where you can go to register. And also on October 30th, you'll also see October 30th on there, me and my mom are doing a live psychic seance and helping you connect with your loved ones on the other side. And for the first time ever on October 30th, me and my mom will be giving live online readings together as well. So if you'd like to sign up for that event, that's also on meetmattfraser.com. All right. Shell is asking a really good question. The question is, Matt, where exactly is heaven? So this is really hard to understand because here on earth, everything is physical, right? We live in a physical world, right? But the thing is, and like Madonna, we live in a material world, but heaven is actually an energy space. So heaven isn't an actual place like Florida or Arizona or China or Italy, right? It's an energy space. So it's kind of weird to think that the spirit world exists all around our world right now, just like right now. Right now, that, there's, there's another world that exists around us, right? Not to put it out there, because I know you guys have been hearing about this, but you know how like the metaverse, it, how they it describe the metaverse? Like right now, we have radio frequencies going above our head. We have Wi-Fi frequencies going above our head. We have TV satellite, satellite uh, images flying above our head right now. We can't see them. But right now, we're all connected on our phones, through our computers, through our television sets. Energy is everywhere all around us right here, right now. So we can't see it, but there's this invisible world of Wi-Fi, radio signals, satellite signals, all of these things, right? And it's crazy to think that in our ear right now, our signal's being sent back and forth. Right now, I'm being sent over the ear to you guys, wherever the hell you guys are right now, right? And do you know that that's how our loved ones in spirit are connected in heaven? Heaven is an is a energy space. It's a higher vibration. So just like Wi-Fi is sent through the ear, right? Wi-Fi signals. Your loved ones are on a higher vibration. And that's the reason why your loved ones can be at any place, anytime, anywhere, because they are energy. And thank you, Gail. Gail says, thank you so much for explaining the spirit world. I got to tell you, I love coming on here and sharing this with you guys because, you know, I've learned so much of the readings that I do. And to be honest with you, because heaven is an energy space, that's why your loved ones use the signs that they do to get your attention. It's the reason why you see and hear things in the form of signs like certain songs, you get messages through electronics. It's because your loved ones are communicating from an energy form. All right. So Don is asking some good question. Do pets have someone to help them cross over when they pass away? So pets do, they go through a life review just like a human does, but there's a difference. So when your pets pass away, their soul evolves, right? And what I mean by that is that when your pets get to the other side, they're a soul just like we are. 
and they can talk and receive information and understand things that they couldn't hear in this world. So they are greeted by family members, usually of yours that have passed away, that help those pets the other side. And then your, your pets are also taken through a review of their life and they're able to see how much you guys love them, how much you cared about them, what happened in their final moments. And they're able to understand things that they didn't understand, like the sacrifices that you made for them. For example, that 50 pound bag of dog food that used to cost you, I don't even know what, do what dog food costs, but let's just say it's 30 bucks every week to feed your dog, right? Or to feed your dogs, right? The vet bills that you used to have to pay, how much that you sacrificed, how many times you left your, your friend's party to go home to walk the dog, to take care of the dog, how many times you stayed home from going on a vacation because you couldn't bring your dog with you, right? They know about all those times. And that's the reason why our pets go through a life review. And that's the reason why they're loyal to us, even in the afterlife, as they were here in this world. Oh, this is a really good question, Vicky. So Vicky's asking, can you be separated from your spirit guide? Hold on, I have to have a sip of my Starbucks. So Vicky, I've never been asked this question before. Mm, excuse me, I got ice. But... What I can tell you is this. I got ice and I got my, my pillow coming from behind my back. So the question is, can you be separated from your spirit guide? And the truth is, no, you can't. You and your spirit guide have a bond from the moment that you're born here in this world. And that's a bond that lasts for life, right? Your spirit guide is given a mission. When you're first born here in this world, you are assigned a spirit guide and a guardian angel. And those souls remain by your side all throughout life. So I'm telling you this because you don't get separated from your spirit guide. Your spirit guide has a job to do and your spirit guide is with you from start to finish. And it's actually amazing because even though sometimes you might feel like you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, you feel like you're misguided, your, your spirit guide is always trying to redirect you even when you get off course. So no, you don't get separated from your spirit guide. Oh my God, Lee Jones is saying to me, Matt, you are so young, but so wise. Well, listen. The reason why I'm wise, and I got to tell you something, it's, it's actually funny. I think my family wants to kill me right now, like Alexa and everyone, because every time something happens, right, in life, I'm like, oh, I know about this because the spirit world has told me this, 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 and this. Or, oh my God, yes, I know about that happening because it happened this, 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 and this. For example, you know, a woman was just, I just was talking to a woman yesterday in, in Home Depot, and we were talking about, you know, um, about uh, going through in vitro fertilization because her and her husband had gone through it. And I was telling, and we were talking all about it. And I knew so much about it because of reading the clients that I've read for. You know, you guys got to know that when doing a reading, it changes your life. You know, I, if somebody said to me, Matt, how have you changed since, you know, having a television show and, and being famous? How has a television show or all of this changed you? And my response was, is that it hasn't changed me. My clients have changed me. M meeting all of you guys and meeting your loved ones in spirit, that's what has changed me. Because, you know, being mainstream right now and, you know, connecting with so many of you and having so having to, having done so many hundreds of readings, I've worked on very high profile cases, right? I read for people who have lost loved ones in the most tragic ways. But the silver lining of doing every reading is that you learn something. You learn something about living life. You learn something about being a better human. You learn something about the spirit world. You learn something about what happens when you die. And you learn something about healing, right? So even though I'm only 32 years old, I've been able to write all of my books. I've been able to do all of my classes. I've been able to teach you all about this because every time I do a reading, I learn something. And that's why I love connecting you with your loved ones is I always wonder what I'm going to learn. And I take all that information and I pass it on to you. I don't want to keep this information a secret. And that's why I go and, you know, I do these lives. I write my books. I do the classes that I do. And what I also get to tell you guys is this, right? Is that I'm still learning. I will never know everything there is to know about the spirit world. It's not until I actually die one day that I'll actually understand everything there is to know. But I know quite a few things from the conversations that I have with your loved ones in spirit, including this, because Dev's just asking me, Matt, if a loved one commits suicide, do they still go to heaven? And you guys, this is a question that, I wish that somebody never would have to ask me, right? Because do you know how many people write to me every single day and they think that their loved one isn't in heaven because of the fact that they passed of suicide? And that completely breaks my heart. And I'll tell you that I have read for many people who have lost loved ones through suicide. Their souls have come through and yes, they have been in heaven. But what I want people to stop doing is stop spreading this false narrative that 
if your loved one passes of suicide, that they're not on the, they're not, they're not on the other side. Like some woman came to me, she was crying, she was broken. She almost didn't come to the event, you guys. I'll never forget, it was years ago in Massachusetts. She came to me crying and I gave her a reading and it changed her life. And at the end of the reading, she came to me and she hugged me and she goes, Matt, she goes, I wasn't gonna come today. I said, why? And she said, because I was talking to my friend and she said, do you know if you commit suicide, if, if, if you're, you commit suicide, you don't, those souls don't make it to heaven. She goes, and your son's not in heaven. And that completely broke me because to think that there are still people out there that think that hurts me in, in the worst way. And that's why, you know, I've posted so many readings for that I've done of people who have passed in suicide and ways like that, because I want you guys to know that, yes, your loved ones do make it to the other side. And, you know, sometimes your loved ones don't consciously make that decision. You know, there's been many, every time that I commit, I, I talk to somebody who um, committed an act like that, right? Who passed of suicide. I can tell you that there are all different ways. Sometimes it's that they didn't even know that what they were doing. Sometimes it was that there was an underlying cause, like a mental illness or an addiction or something else that was going on. So what I can tell you is, is this, is that at the end of the day, souls do make it to the other side. And what's very interesting is to hear their story. Many times souls will come back and explain to me why they did what they did. And not just to me, they explain to their families and there's something that we can learn. And many times those souls who have passed in that way will come back and watch over other family members or other people who um, they're in fear of, of passing of the same way or that was affected by their passing. Oh my God, thank you, Kathy. She says, I love all you, your lives. I love that you're here and with me right now. Um, let's see. Oh my God, this is a good question. Shelby says, Matt, I got three of your books. Are you going to write more? Yes, I'm actually on my fourth book right now. I can't tell you guys much about it, but the minute I can, you know that you're going to be the first to know about it. And I'm going to tell you guys, you are going to be in love with this next book. If you loved We Never Die, you're going to love this next book because I got to tell you something. I keep saying to myself, what am I going to run out of things to talk about? And <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys, every single time I write a book, I'm like, here, here I am again. How am I going to fill this book? And then the minute the minute that I start writing and putting the pen to paper, it just flows out. It's amazing how much I've learned. Um, Jennifer's asking me, after doing a reading, are you tired? Do you hear a lot? Are you drained? Absolutely. What you guys don't see behind the scenes is sometimes I do a reading and I'm like, yes. <laughs> I got the ice on my head. I got the ibuprofen out. I got the diet Coca-Cola out because for some reason, I don't know, that helps me. It's because when you're doing a reading, souls speak through your whole body. They, they you know, send you little, little messages through your thought waves. You see different visions. You feel what they went through. And it's a full body experience. And I'm going to tell you that anytime that I'm like that after a reading, I always know that it was a great show or a great event because I always try to push my gift to the limits. You know, I want to make sure that I read as many people as I can. I want to make sure that I'm getting as much information through that person that I was like, as I can. I want to make sure that I'm, you know, uh, listening and, and delivering as much information as I possibly can. Oh, thank you so much, Ivan, because I love your shows. Thank you. That means the world to me. You know, and that's one of the things that's that's uh, really tough about, about doing this work is that I can only be as good as the information that comes through from the other side. So I have to also make sure that my body is in good working order and that I'm in a good place to be able to receive those messages. Um, hold on, Mr. Reading some of the, the questions here. I see Sal is here from Las Vegas. Thank you for so much for being here. Um, oh, I'm so happy that, that you were here. Claire says, I lost my cousin to suicide. He was 20 years old. This was so comforting. Thank you. Well, I'm glad that you were here and I and know that you were here for a reason because you had to hear this message. Oh my God, this is a really good question. So Cryptic Cell, uh, Kelt says, do spirits have hobbies in heaven like the living do? Yeah, so they don't have the hobbies. Like I've never seen a soul on the other side, you know, playing Legos or, you know, going and, and um, going in building, you know, airplanes. But I can tell you that what I've noticed is that the, the gifts that we have, the God-given gifts that we were born with here in this world, some of us are born leaders, some of us are born musicians, artists, singers, songwriters, whatever it is, right? A lot of those things, a lot of those things that were God-given gifts that we held on to here in this world and discovered here in this world will do in the afterlife. So if your loved one was a painter here in this world, I might see them on the other side painting. i never forget this woman that I was reading for. Her grandmother was a florist. And the minute I connected with her, her grandmother, she showed me she was in this gigantic greenhouse and she had all of these beautiful flowers that were there in heaven. 
And I said to her, oh my God, I'm like, this is going to sound weird. I'm like, but your grandmother showed me she's in this greenhouse with all these flowers and she has these beautiful roses and these huge flowers all around her. And she was like, oh my God, Matt, my mom was a, my grandmother was a florist. She's like, that's what she did. She owned a florist shop. And that was her dream was to have a big greenhouse. And in heaven, that's what she was doing. So what I want you guys to know is that I do see your loved ones doing those things in heaven. And I think that that's just so beautiful because it really gives us a look into what heaven is like. And thank you so much, Lisa, for that as well. So for all of you guys who are here right now, I just want you guys to know um, just, uh, just for a quick minute that if you just tuned in, today is the last day to sign up for the October 5th online reading event. So on October 5th, I will be giving live readings online through Zoom. You don't need a Zoom subscription to attend. All you need is to make sure that you're registered on my website, meetmattfraser.com. Most people, by the way, just use their phones to attend. They just use their iPhone or their smartphone. What happens is, is when you sign up, we send you a link at the time of the online reading. You click it, your cameras turn on, you're live with me. And I get to see you guys and connect you with your loved ones and spirits. So if by now I'm sure you've seen all the readings that I've done on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, all those videos, those hundreds of videos that you see posted on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, every single person who has gotten a reading with me did it by doing one thing. They signed up at meetmattfraser.com and they attended an online reading event. But what I want you to know is that they sell out really quickly. So right now, September is sold out. August is completely sold out. October 1st is sold out. October 3rd is sold out but I do have October 5th available right now. But this is the last day to register. So if you'd like to join me for a live online reading on October 5th, this is your last chance to register. Go to meetmattfraser.com and reserve your spot before it's too late. And I'll let you know that right now there's 1,500 people on here. So not all of you are gonna be able to register, right? The website's gonna kick you out because we can only allow a limited amount of people per each online reading. It's kept to a, to, to a limited crowd. So if you want to be a part of the next online meeting on October 5th, make sure that you register. It doesn't matter where you live. It just matters that you're there because that's the only way that I can go and connect with you and speak with you is that you're at the event. So meet Matt All right. Ash does that. Ash is asking me a good question. Ash is asking me, does time exist in the afterlife? So no, time does not exist in the afterlife because they don't have morning, noons, and nights like we do, right? It's daytime all the time. There is no sleeping in the other side. And what I can tell you is, is that that's the reason why sometimes when people go for a reading, come to me for a reading, they're like, Matt, you're jumping all over the place, right? <laughs> because the thing is, is that you, to your loved ones in spirit, when they pass on, they are able to recall every single memory. They're able to recall everything as if it happened yesterday. So they can recall the time in which they were born, the time when you were born. They can talk about what happened 25 years ago, what happened 30 years ago. And it's funny, sometimes when I'm doing a reading, I'll bring up certain names. Like I'll be like, oh, your dad is with so-and-so. And they'll be like, I don't know that name. I don't know who it is. And the next thing you know, we'll get a Facebook, you know, comment and they'll be like, Matt, I was at your online reading yesterday. And you said that my dad was with Peter and I didn't realize Peter died 25 years ago. That was his best friend from years ago, but just slipped my mind because it happened so many years ago. Right. Well, and, and then some of you guys, when I bring up certain things or I'll say like, oh, your dad is telling me this or he's telling me that. And they'll be like, oh yeah, that happened a long time ago. I forgot about that. I can't believe my dad remembers that. Well, it's because time doesn't exist on the other side. Your loved ones remember everything as if it happened yesterday. And that's the reason why sometimes it's hard as well to make little predictions, right? Because I can't say to you, oh, your dad is telling me that you're going to buy a house on May 15th because you know, there is no time on the other side. So your dad can, your loved ones can tell me certain things like, oh, you're going to move to Colorado. Oh, I see you moving into a two family home. I see this happening, but it's really hard as a medium to pinpoint exact dates because of the fact that there is no time on the other side and our calendars don't match up with their calendars, if that makes sense. Um, so one of the other things that I got to let you know as well, when it comes to the other side and when it comes to talking to spirits is that your loved ones also don't age in spirit as well. Like if your dad, let's, let's say, or well, let's say just somebody in general, let's say somebody in general passed and they would have been 325 years old today. I don't see a 325 year old spirit, right? When your loved ones go to the other side, they are all one age, which is really cool. And Mary says, this is very intriguing. I know, I got to tell you. I, I, it never gets boring. It never gets boring talking about the other side and the afterlife and actually what happens when we pass on. Um, this is a really good question. Um, we just asked that. I, I want to answer this one. Hold on one second. One second, you guys. 
Oh my God, where did that question go? Because this was a really good one. I feel like everybody needs to hear this question. Oh my God. It was, the question was, hold on. I can't believe I lost it. Oh, right here. Teresa, do our loved ones get tired of us asking for signs? Absolutely not. You know, your loved ones love to hear from you. I can't stress that enough. They love hearing from you just as much as you love hearing from them. They love it when you ask them for signs. They love them when you incorporate within them within your life. And one of the best things that they love is if you want to honor a loved one, talk about them. You know, there was a woman that I was reading for and she had lost her husband. And, you know, she felt really weird because when she, when her husband first passed away, right, after, after he had been gone five or six years, she would still talk about them. When she would re meet random people, when she would make new friends, she would share with them little stories about her husband and share with them that her husband had passed away. And for some reason, I don't know if it was grief or it was just because other people got in her ear, but she felt like she shouldn't do that anymore. And do you know that her husband came through on the other side and said that he loved that every single time that it, it was the first thing that he said, he said, Matt, he goes, you're going to tell my wife that I'm so happy that every time she meets somebody, she introduces me and, tell, and tells them a little bit about me and who I was and so on and so forth. And her husband said that every time that she would talk about him to new friends that she would meet, new people that would come into her life, that he felt like he was getting to meet them as well from heaven. And he wanted to thank her for including him in those moments. And she started crying and she goes, Matt, I really need to hear this. She goes, I can't believe you're bringing this up. She goes, this is one of the things that sits on my heart every day. I think that my husband must be like, are you really bringing me up again? And people are always telling me that I shouldn't be talking about him. But your loved, your loved ones love hearing from you just as much as you love hearing from them. So they never, ever, 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 ever get tired of you asking for signs. They never get tired of you voicing your concerns or saying that you're stressed over something or worried over something. They love hearing from you just as much as you love hearing from them. And Alexandra is asking a really good question. Do spirits talk to each other? They absolutely do. And it's actually cool because when I'm doing a live reading or an event, it actually happens a lot when the event space, when I go in, out into the audience, which is weird, right? All of the audience is normally quiet as I'm getting into the readings. But to me, I still hear all of these voices talking all around me. And sometimes I'll hear the spirits communicating with one another. Like, for example, I was doing a reading in, where was it? I think it was, I think it was Ohio. I was just at when I was doing this reading and I was hearing from this woman's father who had passed away. And then all of a sudden, I literally heard her mother come through and say, all right, that's enough. I got to come through. And she pushed her husband and spirit aside and came through and talked. And I, they started like talking to one another. And the father's like, well, can I just finish what I got to say? And the mother's like, no, I'm, I got to speak. I got to speak. And I could hear them like literally kind of bickering with one another on the other side. And I started laughing mid-reading and saying, you're never going to believe this. But I got your mother here and your dad here. And this is what they're saying. I can hear them talking. And the woman was like, oh, my God, that's totally them. So, yeah, your loved ones do talk to each other. And as a medium, sometimes I even pick up on those conversations, which leads me to tell you guys that I am heading back on tour, by the way. So if you guys haven't heard, I am coming to give live readings up close and personal. Here's where you can see me. So if you haven't seen, I just added some brand new cities and states. I am coming to give live readings on September 29th. I'll be giving live readings in Moncton, Canada at Casino, New Brunswick. It's actually in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Then I'm heading to Harris, Michigan on October 6th and October 7th. You can come and meet me at the Island Resort Casino. I'll be giving live readings there for two nights. That's October 6th and October 7th. Then I'm coming to Omaha, Nebraska. I'm coming to Kansas City, Missouri. I'm coming to Laughlin, Nevada to the Edgewater Casino. I'm coming to Santa Rosa, California to the Luther Burbank Center for the Arts. I'm also coming for the first time ever to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where I'll be giving readings at the Wind Creek Event Center. I'm also coming to Foxwoods Resort Casino on December 9th. There's one row of seats left. And then I'm also coming to the Hard Rock Sacramento in Wheatland, California. So if you'd like to come and meet me live in person, you can get your tickets at meetmattfraser.com. But if I'm not going to be in your city, state, or area, you got to join me for the next online reading. The next online reading is, Oct is happening on October 5th. And that's where I'm going to be helping you connect with your loved ones on the other side. So that being said, if there's been someone that you're missing, if there's someone that you've been wanting to hear from, and more importantly, if you feel like there's something left unsaid between a loved one and spirit, your loved one and spirit is probably feeling the exact same way. If you've been feeling a nagging, a pulling, if you've been feeling like someone in spirit has been trying to reach you, it means that you have to come and see a psychic medium because there's most likely a message that's there that your loved one has to send to you. So that being said, this is your chance. October 5th is available right now, but there's only a few hours left to register. 
So to come and be a part of that live online reading with me on October 5th, just go to meetmattfraser.com to reserve your spot. And also, I know a lot of you guys are psychic. I know a lot of you have a lot of your own abilities as well. So what I want you guys to know is that for the first time ever, also on my website, on October 30th, me and my mom are coming together the night before Halloween, and we're hosting an online psychic seance where you can join me and my mom on Zoom, and we're going to be doing a couple things. We're going to be teaching you how to safely connect with your loved ones in spirit. We're going to teach you about psychic protection. We're going to go and answer your questions about heaven and the afterlife. And together, me and my mom are going to be doing live readings with one another on Zoom. It's the first time we're ever using our abilities together in this way. So if you'd like to reserve your spot, you have to be registered in advance. Just go to meetmattfraser.com. That's meetmattfraser.com. All right. I've been live talking with you guys for a little bit over an hour now, and it's been so fun. I love seeing from you, seeing you guys, hearing you guys, connecting with you guys. And more importantly, I cannot wait to meet you guys in person while I'm live on tour or I hope that you'll join me at the next online reading event. So if you'd like to go and reserve your spot, so just go to meetmattfraser.com and listen, I don't want to hear it. Everybody always says to me, Matt, I can't figure out how to sign up for an online reading. Well, I shouldn't say everyone, few people. Listen, if the dead can find me, so can you. Just go to meetmattfraser.com, click on online readings. And what I want you to know is that it's super easy. You sign up, we send you a link, you click it. Most people just use your phones and that's it. You're live with me. So I hope you'll join me on October 5th. This is your last chance to reserve your spot and I'll see you there. And remember, in the meantime, trust in the signs. Your loved ones are always with